the end of a whole uh, day of brilliant academically packed and charged uh, set of presentations and I'm completely ignorant of all the issues that was discussed with great uh, charm and erudition and uh, what I will stick to is what is peripheral to the Constitution. I mean something that has added nothing probably substantive to it I mean um, and certainly not part of its legal political structure but yet something which is distinctive of the Indian Constitution that it was illuminated it had a lot of artwork in it which probably very I think no other constitution perhaps has now Nandalal was selected for this job I presume uh, owing to his long association with the the freedom movement and this substantial contribution to the shaping of visual culture for the nation both as an artist and as an art teacher therefore before we look at Nandalal's contribution to the Constitution it may be in place to briefly look at the nature of his association with the national movement Nandalal began his artistic career in 1905 when he joined the class of Abhinindu Nath Tagore as one of his first students in the Gurdman College of Arts that was the first class which was I mean designated as a class of Indian painting I mean technically it had a different name but essentially for the first time there was a class which was trying to teach Indian artists in an Indian manner so before that we know people like Ravi Verma painted this was the kind of art that every Indian painter aspired to do including Abhinindra Nath he himself was trained in such a manner but somewhere around 1896 he gives up this idea and he thinks that Indian should paint in a manner that is more Indian and he looks towards Mughal miniatures as the source for his style and also looked at Mughal history as the source of his subject matter and literature Sanskrit literature here I have a illustration to Kalidasa so that was the kind of thing then came the Sudeshi movement in which is participated and somewhat much used and abused picture of his the Bharat Mata and but interestingly by the time he's doing this he's also absorbing Japanese techniques and so on so really this Bharat Mata is a very mixed hybrid Bharat Mata in terms of style it is a mixture of European and Japanese techniques in terms of the person who inspired it I mean it was inspired by sister Nivedita a great Indian enthusiast but no Indian so there are many other aspects I won't go into this but he was a student under this man while he was painting this and he immediately absorbed that kind of technique so Nandalal did things which went with the Sudeshi nationalist of that time and he was championed while doing these works by people like Kumara Swami, Sister Nivedita, E.B. Havel and so on but there was also a critic of this kind of painting which was being developed at the same time and that critic came from Rabindranath Tagore so he was thinking that it is wonderful that we are aware of our past but if that awareness of the past comes in the way of our being sensitive to our present then that awareness is something that we should try to do away if it makes us more insular then that awareness is not good so these were his criticism and Nandalal was one of the artists who responded to this criticism more than any of the other artists so he invited Nandalal to take charge of his art school in Shantiniketan so once he reaches there he changes maybe an attitude so how to, an artist can really participate in the nationalist project an artist can participate in the nationalist project by probably creating a new kind of history painting 
where contemporary events would be monumentalized, would be iconized, and so on. So on the top, you have a drawing of an entire mural that he did. And the center, you have the detail of that. Uh, so you have a detail of that central panel. The event celebrates the ceremony that Tagore started in Shantaniketan of a ceremonial plowing that is marking an agricultural festival or agriculture as an important part of the Indian social life. So there were two festivals he almost si started simultaneously. One was a ceremonial tree planting. And if you know Shantaniketan was a completely barren place, it didn't have topsoil because people didn't cultivate for years and years and years together. And it is absolutely barren without water and so on. So these two festivals were very important of planting trees. I mean, anybody who has visited there knows now it's a green place totally and all that transformation took place in the last 100 years. So this was one of them. The other thing was how to take art outside the studios into social spaces. So he used these murals to do that, and he also did in other ways. Both Tagore and Nandalal kind of teamed up together to write a primer for the children. So Tagore wrote the text, and Nandalal provided the images. And so it was also to become an artist who communicates with people, your artwork as a means of communication. And these are some of the illustrations he used in those texts. Uh, they are fabulous and they are very cheaply pr produced, but wonderful quality of images which allowed the children to sensitively respond to their immediate environment in various ways. It's life, it's animals and so on. You see quite a lot of that. Now, Tagu, in a sense, was, while he did this, he was a little sh shy of the the political nationalism. He was part of it from 1905 to 1908, 9, and then suddenly he saw that this political nationalism was turning communal, the Sudeshi movement, and one fine morning he decided, I am not going to be part of it. And he retired, and he decided, I will just focus on education as a tool. And this education had two uh, kind of things. One of the primary thing. I mean, goals was to educate a generation who will be more sensitive to the needs of rural people. Because he found the Congress party and its leaders were not sensitive to the needs of the rural people. It was highly a city-based kind of thing at that point of time. That was one thing. And the second thing he wanted was, I mean, people who are more sensitive to nature. And that was the second thing. Now, both these became part of his project. So while when Gandhi first arrived in India, the first place he called was Shantinigan, because that's where his phonic school went and settled for a short while. All the same, Tagore and Gandhi had different opinion, major differences on various things. And many of his teachers were interested in the national movement, so we have him writing at several points. In 1921, he writes to one of his teachers, our teachers, Shurin Kaur, and he says that, I do not wish to speak for or against non-cooperation, but if some of you care for it, there is no problem at all. The only point is our Shantinigedan stays out of politics. So this is his statement. Again, we see him reiterating the same idea in another letter in 1931, which is also another important point. Um, I mean, sorry, 30. And then he says, again he writes and quote, if any member of our ashram participates in the present national struggle out of a sense of responsibility, I would have no objection. But politics should not touch Shantiniketan ashram. The ideals of our ashram is far greater than nationalism. So this was his stated position. But many people who were close to him did participate. And one of them was Nandalal Bose. And especially in 1930, when the, the Dandi March took place, he was 
completely moved. So he was watching, I mean, Gandhi for the last 15 years, because as I said, Gandhi was a frequent visitor both to Shantaniketan and to Calcutta, to the house of the Tagores, where he had various discussions, although they differed on these issues. And so Dantalal was associated with maybe when Gandhi came, there were very frequently programs which were just organized for him, cultural programs, theater, and so on. And Nandalal was in charge of that. So he probably knew Gandhi and Gandhi knew him. But 1930 was a real I mean, point of departure in I mean, Nandalal's involvement with Gandhian politics. So he did at least three versions of this, Dandi March. And as a kind of uh, artist who was already thinking at the same time about art communication and all these issues and how to do a new kind of history painting, he certainly saw that Gandhi's, I mean, Dante March, or the way he planned it, was a brilliant communicational strategy that he could galvanize lots of Indians together. He would bring everything. So it was a, I mean, in, he probably understood the symbolic political kind of gesture that Gandhi was making. And so Nandalal really decides that he has to celebrate this moment in a certain way. So these are these three versions of this painting. And something he did which was even more wonderful was this simple, I mean, lino cut. And where you see Gandhi walking, resolute and thoughtful and calm, and it not only iconized that moment immediately, but if you think about today, you know the large amount of archives of photographs and uh, film documentaries that, is, that exist on Gandhi. And yet, probably this is one of the most memorable images of Gandhi. So it was a remarkable thing for this artist to do at that point of time. And Gandhi took note of Nandalal after this. And we see, and also of his school. In 1933, we have a letter where Gandhi really plans to send one of his associate's son to Shantiniketan to study art. That's the first time we uh, find a clear reference to Nandalal and the school. And in 1933 is also the year when he really begins to talk about the crafts and the village industries and how to bring that about and so that, all that. And it is in this context that Gandhi decides to use Nandalal as one of his people, one of those people who would really, uh, I mean, bring his idea into fruition. And we have, I mean, already at this moment, that was another moment of uh, interaction between uh, Gandhi and Tagore. Uh, Tagore responds to this idea and say that I don't think it's good enough just to work with the rural crafts and all that. You should also have to bring in arts at the higher level and he says that you, I mean you should not think that arts at a higher level is only meant for the elites it should I mean even the poor man needs that art as much as anyone else so in fact I mean uh, immediately Gandhi says every message coming from Dr. Tagore must receive respectful attention from me I quite believe that we shall not neglect the arts he would not let us neglect even if we forget our duties. He has lent the assistance of Surendra Nathkar, who has already been a, paid a preliminary visit, and I have discussions, I have discussed the whole thing with Dinabandhu C.F. Andrews, who will in turn discuss with Gurudev. So you can see around 1933, they begin to talk about the issues of art and craft and how to do, project them and so on. And the Tagorean and uh, model and his people associates, Surendra Nath Kaur, Nandalal Bose and so on, becomes part of that. Or we might say that it's the beginning of his institutional uh, kind of collaboration with the Shantiniketan Art School. And this expands. The first time that it expands and takes a form is in 1936 when Gandhi invites Nandalal to the Lucknow Congress and says that you organize an exhibition of arts. And this, I mean, we unfortunately, none of these things are photographically recorded. We only have written accounts. And also what 
Gandhi himself speaks in the various inaugural speech addresses he gave during these. From which we know that this exhibition in 1936 had crafts collected from all over India, from southern India, northern India, eastern, western, and all that. Also from, I mean, uh, tribal communities, folks. So it was all kinds of things were there, as well as paintings by the new Indian artist the Bengal school artist, including those of, say, Gemini Roy, who was not part of the Shantinikana community, but he was also accommodated and shown in this exhibition. While inaugurating the exhibition, Gandhi said, this exhibition to my mind brings out concretely for the first time the conception of a true rural exhibition. I have nursed in my breast for several years. You will not expect me to describe all or even some of the numerous sections of the exhibition. It is impossible for me to do so. And then he continues, let me tell you that you will have an inkling of the inside even from where you are sitting. For, the front of, for in front of you are not triumphal arches, but there are, they are simply but exquisitely decorated walls done by Nandalal Bose, the eminent artist from Shantanigetan and his co-workers, who have tried to, to repre represent the villagers' craft in simple artistic symbols. And when you go inside the art gallery on which Nanda Babu has lavished his labors for weeks, you will feel, as I did, like spending three hours together. And then he goes on to say that this will is going to be not an entertainment, but some, there is so much to learn in this exhibition, and this is going to be an educative one. And so this was the first thing he had with Gandhi. The next year, in 37, Nandalal is again called to do something at Faispur, and these are some of the drawings he did for the Faispur Congress. Okay. And he is asked to design uh, the exhibition of a village crafts at Faispur. Now, I mean, these were also the years that Gandhi was trying, moved out and lived in an extremely, I mean, within quote, let's say, primitive village. I mean, where people were far away from all kinds of literature, music, and he was really, if you read the addresses to the Congress workers, he was always trying to tell them, now, now you have to write literature for these people. You have to bring music to them. You have to do various things. So he is deliberately choosing such a place where this Congress would take place. And he writes to Nandalal, you have to now take care of this and do, then he writes, you have, you gave much at Lucknow. I want now more for Faispur. For the first time in the history of the Congress, it is to be held in a village pure, and this exhibition will be the attraction of for the numerous villagers who are expected to flock at Faispur. It must provide solid education for them, and the whole show must be on the village setting. How is it that to be? You have to forget the city scale and big of bigness and great expenditure. Your art has to come to the rescue. I have asked Shangarlal Bankar not to spend more than rupees 5,000 on the exhibition. In fact, for the whole uh, work, not just for the exhibition. And um, so this is what he charged Nandalal with. You have to do this whole place. You have to use local materials. He writes, don't bring anything from Shantaniketan. I mean, you will come here, use the crafts, the materials you have here, and you'll create the exhibition and the place. He continued, and I know that it can be done for that amount and yet be made attractive. The village, I mean, Sarangi provides all the music that the most expensive piano has ever provided, but it takes a musician to yield the music, I mean, yield the music from this little, that the little instrument holds. You will be the architect, will you be the architect of the Faispur exhibition? So this was his letter, and of course Nandalal tried to wriggle out of it, 
I mean, a little bit, but he said nothing doing. He says, my health is poor. He says, Gandhi writes, I am also in poor health. Come, let us convalesce together, kind of thing. So he goes and we have a photograph of the five school congress at the gate where Nehru, who was the president of that congress, I mean, addresses thing. Now, the, the charge that Nandalal is given is something that anybody who has read Gandhi is familiar. He is, in fact, it be quite interesting because how, in how many ways did he use this word art? If you go through 